Chord inversion is a relatively advanced concept, but it shouldn't be too difficult to grasp if you've been through the chord theory series on the site and if you break it down in the way I'm about to show you. Using its simplest definition, a chord inversion is where the root is not the lowest note, often called the bass note, in a chord. This means another note in the chord occupies the bass position. You'll often see these altered bass chords written as slash chords. For example, C slash E would imply a C major chord with an E bass note. So all we're doing is rearranging the stack of notes in a chord, giving us several possible voicings of that same chord. The benefits of mastering chord inversion are twofold. Number one, you'll have more voicing options for a given chord. Inversions give you more specific voicings of each note in a chord, meaning a better flow of harmony through your chord changes. You'll hear what I mean as you progress. Number two, you'll be able to play chords in more positions on the fretboard. This means more economical fingering and therefore more possibilities for adding additional notes, for example, creating phrases around the chord shape. Let's start by looking at major triad chord inversions. The major triad consists of a root, major third and fifth. For example, a G major triad would consist of the notes G, B and D. With the root note as the lowest note in the chord, we have two possible root voicings. These are called root positions because the root is the note on which the other chord tones are stacked. So here we have two root positions, 1-3-5 and 1-5-3. These are the standard triad stacks with the root on the bass that occur in the most common chord shapes like these ones. So in the first two chord forms we can see the major third is built on the root, whereas in the second two chord forms the fifth is built on the root. Because the root note acts as the bass in both these forms, they will sound quite similar. Although it's good to know both forms for lead voicing. For example, if you specifically need a lower sounding major third, you would use the 1-3-5 chord form. It's when you start moving the root out of the bass position that the chord starts to sound altered. As mentioned before, an inversion occurs when the root is not the bass note of a chord. This means one of the other notes in the chord acts as the bass and the root gets stacked above that note along with any other chord tones. With a first inversion of a major triad, the third becomes the bass and the fifth and root are stacked above it. So let's say you wanted a first inversion G major chord. Simply find the root note of G on the D, G or B strings and build one of the corresponding forms below. You should memorize these shapes. As you can probably guess by process of elimination, with second inversion triads, the fifth becomes the base with the root and third above it. You'll notice that these chord forms are very similar to the root and first inversion forms with perhaps only one note difference. However, it's good to be able to break chord forms down like this to have the option of using different strings for different voicings. You can find the chord inversion charts that will show you the stack of notes for a given root on the lesson page. Follow the link in the description. A minor triad consists of a root, minor third and fifth. Just like with major triads, when the root note is the bass note of the chord, we have two root minor triad positions. 
On the fretboard, we can simply take the major forms and flatten the third to a minor third. With a minor triad first inversion, the minor third becomes the bass and the fifth and root are stacked above. In a second inversion minor triad, the fifth becomes the bass with the root and minor third above it. In the next part we'll look at seventh chord inversions, which involve four note stacks. In the meantime, try incorporating the inversions we've learned in this lesson into your practice routine and songwriting. The more you play around with them, the more your ear will be trained to identify such chords and anticipate them in a chord sequence. Cheers. Thank you.